All right, we're gonna have a slightly different, I gotta take these glasses off, I can't see Jason from here. Uh, we're gonna have a slightly different tone on the video this week. Uh, we know if you've been on Facebook or anywhere else, you've seen the, the Dow and Murdy situation and a lot of questions and concerns about safety, Jason. It was a nasty looking rat. It was bad. Um, obviously this is, this is darn near the same car, folks. It's same year, same everything, really. Same brand, uh, so we're going to talk about it, but we'll, we'll, we'll do that here this week on old guys that drive stock cars safely, we hope. All right, we actually made a list this week. We're being professional. And if we're gonna talk about safety, we're gonna start with shop safety. Manny keeps saying there's like a giant bear running around this shop. There's, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> He's right there! You see him? It's like the no. Sense around here. I don't see him. Manny's, I don't know, Manny's, I think he's on the sauce. I see <laughs> He's on the sauce. Unreal. So anyway, what, uh, let, we'll, we'll be serious about this here. So, young man, Dale and Murdy, we're kind of looking forward to hopefully you and him, you know. Trying to get after him. Trying to point. get after him, you know. This young man is, what, 20 years old? Been tearing it up in one of these cars, and him yeah. and his, his dad, obviously he comes from a racing family. They're part of the Harris Terminator family too. Um, kind of really blew up from the Bristol races stuff. Yeah, basically. yeah. But capable of winning every time he's on the track. He's proven that time and time again, up and coming guy. I bet we see him in a super late model before too long. <laughs> uh, had a nasty wreck and we will show you some of the footage. I would like to credit the person who actually shot this video, but uh, I, it's been shared so many times on Facebook. I don't know how to track that down. I do have some photos coming up from Brandon Ailing, our local photographer of another situation in Makokita. At a practice session, uh, we will be showing you, but credit to Brandon for that. So, in your opinion, and everybody's got an opinion, we understand this right now on the internet. There's a lot of nasty stuff going around. There's a lot of kindness going around, and we need more of that. Uh, this young man's going to be okay. He's got a knock on the head, and it could have been a heck of a lot worse. But uh, I've heard comments. Let's hear. Uh, I even wrote them down. Car was made out of muffler pipe. Swing set tubing. Uh, chrome molly threw out to save weight. Conduit. Cheap, thin, light Chinese steel. Um, Don't yeah. Pull. yeah. We'll show you the inside of this car here shortly and we'll, we'll give you a tour of what this is because it, and from what we understand, this car and Dale and Murdy's car were about the same. They were right with, built within each other, very close. Yeah. But he was, the car he was actually racing. Yeah. The, it was one of their older, little bit older cars. And uh, the Dallin and Damon Murdy family did put out too that that car was wrecked. It had been to Harris. Uh, Harris advised against fixing it. They chose to do it themselves. Yeah, I think they did it themselves. And yeah, they repaired it. And, and that's we're not throwing the Murdy family under the bus by any stretch of the imagination. They said that themselves and were kind of you know no. pointing out that hey look stop jumping on Harris. No different than what a lot of people have done. Repaired theirs. Yeah, and Jevin did it last year. He rolled his car over and yes, he did. repaired it and was back out there. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, Jevin's rollover was about as... I mean, he literally had another one of these just barrel rolling over him as his car was rolling and it, it held up. So, obviously, he knows what he's doing, too. Uh, unlike a lot of the people on the internet, and again, we're not knocking anybody. This needs to be friendly. Um, Jason did something nice today. He called Harris. And he asked him honest questions. We're looking at this car. Do we need to be adding another bar? Do we need to do anything else to make it safer? And what was their response to you? Yeah, when I basically when I first seen the the pictures, I kind of thought, man, you know, we got the exact same car. Yeah. Is there something that possibly maybe needs to be braced up? Isn't as safe as what it could possibly be? Uh, it was a pretty nasty looking wreck. When you're driving, you're going to be sitting in that car and you're thinking about that. You don't really ever think about that kind of stuff happening, but right. it, it can. And it was about worst case scenario to what actually did happen there. But 
Uh, they basically the, the car, everything in these cars is built within the rules that IMCA has out there. And it's within a lot of, not just IMCA, but USRA and a lot of different sanctioning bodies. It meets, it meets those guidelines. I, when I called and talked to you about this at first and we kind of, we first seen it, I sent you the pictures, yeah. you know, I felt, I felt confident in sitting in this car. I didn't feel like I was in a car that was not safe in any way. Right. Uh, I do. When I called and talked to them, that was basically my main thing is if we were going to talk about this, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't something that they thought needed to be updated that we possibly should be doing to do to make this car a little safer. But there isn't, there isn't anything at all that they think that should be changed. They did give me some information about the cars though. The tubing, the, the four points throughout this main cage that Harris uses, it's the same that they will use the tubing wise is their 95 thousandths wall. And they use DOM tubing. They don't use any docal on the main part. They don't use any chrome molly on these main sections. On the other parts, there could be. That is an option that you could have something like that, but it's, they don't do that on any of these parts of these cars. If anybody ever worked on it on the side or did something themselves, that could be questionable, questionably different. Um, I think a lot of it, if you watch that wreck, he went up and he hit that, when he hit that fence, it, I'm guessing it tweaked the cage pretty good at that point weakened it quite a bit and then when he flipped over and you know that the next car that drove into him these cars are 3,000 pounds and it's sitting flipped up on its on its lid it got hit probably worst case scenario right into this bar that was already probably got hit on the fence and maybe the cage twisted got hit caved this all right back and the next thing to think about is you don't know what was actually on the front end of that car for a bumper you know you can build valid bumper. Points. yeah it, it could it could be a very light, like the the bumper we made has a lot of tubes and it's but it's very it's pretty lightweight the tubing size of it. It's not very heavy at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you could put something very heavy up there, you know, and it would just go right through some. Chuck's had experience with different bumpers. Well, it, we were just talking about that off air in you know the hobby stock sitting above us here last year. I started out with a I'm not going to say the company's name, but it was a commercially available bumper bolted right in, easy to you know to install. Uh, it looked like a piece of Swiss cheese after the first time I got into any kind of an accident, which is very common in these cars. The second bumper, his brother built, and I nailed a guy square in the axle at full speed uh, when he spun around on the back stretch, and it bent the corner of the bumper. Yeah, so and, it was uh, yeah. two different, it was like extremely lightweight collapses to very, very rigid bumper. Yeah. And that was one thing at Harris they talked about that, you know, you don't, you don't know exactly what these guys are putting on these cars that you're going to be racing against. You have no clue what's in that other car. It did come from another company, but you can, all the racers are modifying, they're changing stuff, they're building their own things. It could be extremely stiff, so that could have been another thing. It, got, it could have got hit with a bump bar that was way heavier than this bar here. And getting sitting dead, dead stopped, flipped over straight onto this halo it's it's not gonna have much chance of living at that point and if you're honestly looking at the wreck from uh, just a it was one of those million and a one shots it literally was two <laughs> the, the collision with the pole on the fence yeah and then wham straight into the roof at a car coming through the corner i mean it's it's the worst case scenario and let's hope that dylan never sees another wreck like that in his entire career yeah. most people will go their entire racing career without ever being in a wreck like that. And the back could even like flip up and kind of dug into the dirt, yeah. held it even better in mm -hmm. place. But it was about as nasty as it could be. And I mean, it looked like he actually, his seat did get hit around. I know a lot of the, the tubing, from what I was told, none of that tubing was actually ripped apart or broke in those pictures. It was mm -hmm. actually everything that was in there was cut in a way when it was getting him out of that car. They said there was no tubing that was actually ripped apart on that car before they cut it up. So it held together. They said it was together. Mm -hmm. it, it was. It looks worse in the pictures after they cut him out. And, and we're, we're showing some of the photos throughout here. And again, we were just talking too off camera that these cars, they're 3,000 pounds. Uh, if you give car buyers, car drivers, whatever, team owners, you give, you give them two options. You give them one that's built like a tank that's going to be slower and cost a little bit more or one that is built to be safe to the rules that has been tried, tested, and you know is... Possibly faster. Possibly faster. 
what percentage of people are going to buy the one that costs more and is heavier? How Man, many? Manny, what, what, what percentage? 0. 0.0. Manny says 0. 0.0. It's just, it's a racer thing, you yeah. know? It's, it's how it is. So, that could come in question. Harris, Sniper Speed, uh, BMB, all these different, there's a lot of different people building these cars, and they're building them to the rules that they, they fit these rules all over, USRA, IMCA, there's a lot of different sanctioning bodies that they, they meet the rules 100%. There's nothing wrong with the, the way the car is built uh, in, in the rules, legally. That doesn't say that you couldn't add more bars, but is a company going to sacrifice possible speed, adding more weight, more bars to their car? So maybe the, maybe the builders aren't having any problems. Maybe the sanctioning bodies should up their rules a little bit more. Yeah, possibly. Exactly. There's you a know, lot of different opinions in this. USRA, IMCA steps in and says, look, we're going to make you add three more bars to this damn thing to make sure nobody gets hurt. Great, do it across the board. Yeah, and it's and you know it's kind of a tough thing because you got to guys these these cost a lot of money just yeah. to have. Yeah. So some people you know they don't want to just start adding their own bars to them. You know they are gonna have to take it back in and get something like that done. Right. And maybe you don't maybe know what you, with with this happening like they say on the internet the Dale Earnhardt Senior the moment yeah. you know maybe yeah. some of this stuff's gonna trickle down and we're gonna have to add more stuff to this. But yeah. And again, if you don't know what you're doing and you start cutting into the roll cage, you can make it worse instead of better. Yep. Or if it's the type of material that it's made out of, depending on the way you weld it, it could actually make the cage weaker. But yeah. And and again, this stuff. I mean, this happened in a race. Uh, from what you could see, Dallin was on the outside all by himself, yep. and that the the car just, just kind of bit and flipped flipped and, over. Uh, Makokita, uh, Corey Meyer hit a tractor tire. This is in the first practice of the year. Now, if you've been following this channel all winter, you know how hard we've worked. I think that was a new car too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, from what yeah. I understand. And, and again, thanks to Brandon for the letting us use the photos here. But uh, Corey caught a tractor tire on the inside and uh, I don't know, the one photo, it looks like you could almost walk under the car and yeah. it was like perfectly parallel to the track and boy, that's just, it's rough. So, and again, this is in a practice session. Yeah. Anything can happen in these things. I mean, that's, you know, when you're getting in it, that's kind of how it is. And the biggest thing, again, is that, you know, Corey Meyer was okay. Dallin Murdy was okay. Uh, he's got a bump on the head, and man, we can't wait to come up and say hi to you at the track. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can give you a run for your money this year. And I'm sure that, you know, him and his dad are both going to be back out there. And all the safety gear did its job. 100%. Yeah. So. That's yeah. Even even safety gears get questioned over this. Yeah. On how well local tracks or local places are pushing the rules and keeping everything up to date. But all right. So the professor doesn't understand. Uh, well, he doesn't know this is coming here. But I'm going to kind of hold his feet to the fire. You ever run a head and neck restraint in your car in your late model? A head and neck restraint? No, I have not. We've ran this type of seat, and I've actually and I've ran the old what everybody's always ran before. You know, like. A seat from the 2000s and personally I when we went to these I really didn't overly like this seat because you can't you can't couldn't move around much yeah. I'd like to come up out of the corner and possibly try to turn look back up underneath me if I'm up the top see if somebody's down there or you're trying to hear but I, I really didn't like it I like the other seat but it's just a matter of probably the more you race with it the better you get with it uh, type thing right what ear is your helmet how old is it the helmet that I have right now is an impact from, I don't know. I'd have to pull it out and look at it. Is it, is it up to par for a head and neck restraint? Does it have the attachments? <laughs> oh, it, I think it has, head, it has head and neck restraints on it. Okay, good, because I'm buying you one, <laughs> just so you know. But I've never had, My, the, I've never actually had, you're talking like a Hans device type. Well, I'll let you pick. There's several, yep. and it's not just the Hans device that's out there now. Yep. But my wife saw that wreck, and she's like, "You're not getting in this car this year without one." And, <laughs> and we start thinking about, you know, Callan and Thomas and Jessica, <laughs> and so yeah, we're gonna get you one. Probably too. a good thing I didn't buy a helmet already then. Huh? Yeah, probably a good thing. So, <laughs> but you know, and uh, Wes Digman, who's a local parts guy in our area, had made a post too that. You can cut money on engines. You can cut money on chassis. You can cut money on tires. You probably, after seeing that wreck, 
That can happen to any one of us at any given time. Yeah. You should not be cutting money on safety gear. If you can afford to get something a little bit better, get out there and get it. It's worth, worth ending up getting it. Yeah. So, congratulations. You're getting a head and neck. Oh, there, there's my old helmet right there, Manny. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd feel terrible if something happened to the professor in any car, let alone one that... Oh, there this helmet's, there, there, this oh, helmet's about wore out. That's perfect. That was, that was Cal's first season helmet right there <laughs> and and again uh let's bring up tracks and we're not throwing the tracks under the bus but how many times manny jason charlie cal has somebody from a track come up to make sure that your safety gear is up to up to snuff or that you're even wearing it uh it's well it's happened over the years not a not a lot it's always at the beginning of the season you know and they they look through it and it's once you once we got up a little higher in the levels and we've done it longer, I would say our car wasn't as picked on as much on that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When we were first starting, we were probably picked up more of it, but it's not as big. Like if you go to Beaver Dam, though, I mean, if there's a little rip in the bottom of your pants, anything, you know, you're not going to race. You got to go over yeah. and buy another suit. If there's a tear or anything, mm -hmm. you're done. Yeah. They're not gonna lay on the track. Are all the tracks like that? We do. No. no, not at all. Not one bit. Yeah, but it it, it has happened. But I mean, I, this is gonna be my 25th year, and I would say how many times has it happened? <laughs> <laughs> 25 years in racing. We could count on a handful. Probably. Yeah, I've never been checked. <laughs> I've never once been checked to see if my helmet was. Uh, Joe, Joe, when he for, when he took over in Darlington, he went pretty hard on it. When he jumped in there, good. so Veneta, he's taken. Yeah. He went at it pretty good. Yeah. You know, and he's been pushing safety pretty, pretty hard on him over there. And again, the tracks don't want to be beating us over the head with it. It's, we should be doing that ourselves. It's it's another thing. So yeah. if somebody gets there, it, it's kind of another thing on a track wise. So you only get so many cars. So if ever somebody shows up the track, and they think something's kind of subpar, maybe not quite there, mm -hmm. they're gonna tell them they can't race. Are they going to let them race? I, I've been in a situation before where we've had to loan guys a neck brace or a helmet yep. or whatever, or a pair of gloves or there, there has uh, even a steering wheel one night. <laughs> I know, I know at some of our local tracks, guys have been, been hit for not having a, a neck brace on or something yeah. when they're driving out there or gloves. Yep. They've been nailed yeah, on something that. something above the window line, you're yep. probably going to, and you should. On our local tracks, I know they've been checking that right when the guys are rolling out, if you don't have that on. Yep. And we're not trying to be preachy here, but, uh, Maybe it's time we should get you in here. Have you actually look at the inside of a, a Harris Terminator car? Very, very. See how this cage very is Very comparable to what uh, Dallin Murdy was in when he was in that accident. See how it's built and see what you think. All right, Professor's getting his safety gear on here. If we're going to do a video about safety, you better be safe. He's going to wear a hard hat inside the car. <laughs> Manny, you going to shoot video? Got to have the gear. Can't do a job without the gear. You want to be well, the second cameraman? He's a county guy. He's probably you gotta have one of them on all day. Holy man, you got a small head. <laughs> Cutting off circulation. <laughs> Are we gonna talk about it a little bit? What do we think here? Where do you wanna start? Oh well, this is I mean, I think I think we should probably show that how the halo is made. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna get in here. And we're going to show you the halo. Manny, will you hand me that second camera? Thank you, sir. Yeah. The main, the main halo that they build in these cars, in these front, front uprights and its upper bars up here, they said in every car, it doesn't matter if you were buying a Harris, the Sport Mod, Modified, Stock Car, or, or even the Hobby Stock, it's made out of that 95,000 DOM tubing, and that's the only thing they use on every car. You can't get that in Chromoly or Tokol or anything else. These okay. parts, that's how they're made on every one of them. No matter what kind of car you have. And it's inch and three quarter, 95 thousandths wall. You can see there is quite a few extra braces within this. The front pieces, there's another brace in here. Uh -huh. uh, I think the Earnhardt bar or something, they don't, it isn't in any of these cars and i looked around and didn't really see it on a whole lot of any other cars out there but yeah. there probably is some is there places they maybe could add other bars i possibly i guess i i know at harris he did say talking with 
at, with Kyle there, and he did say that these cars, one rule is the width of the chassis, like how far this, the width of this halo has to be. Sure. And he actually thought that this, these halos are, this is made to the absolute minimum that you can possibly make one, mm -hmm. the width. And he said if it was narrower, it should actually be a little bit stronger. If they that makes sense, yeah. But to the rules, you can't narrow it up. So this is how they, this is what they do make them too. Hmm. So there is, there is some things that maybe they'd like to do different. I, if there was more rules, I don't, I don't really know what all the different bars. We're definitely not chassis experts by any means. But there is a lot of bracing in this car. And you have built cars from the, from the ground up. Yeah, I mean we've down here we've built, we built quite a few cars actually from nothing, haven't we? Jevin, Jevin built one. One of them that Jevin got built, it got turned on the front stretch and went directly into that cement wall, oh. and it collapsed the front end and stuff in. But his main cage stayed pretty. I mean, Jevin's kind of wrecked. Jevin's wrecked. He's a lot wrecked of a lot of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> like to where they can't be used anymore. I've only had that happen once, and it was just a guy basically hit me in the back and turned me. Yeah. But. This car, from what I see, is pretty well, it's really well built. Guys were talking that the welds were horrible, but I don't, I don't see it. I don't either. I, I see the welds look really, really, really good. There's a lot of extra bracing down under here, even down through this door bar and above the frame. Uh, You've got... You can see the rear kickers from back there. Mm -hmm. And it's braced all the way back to the frame back there. I, I don't know what you're gonna do to make it much stronger. Well, let's some people say that the seat heights you could you could end up mounting your seat way too high. Uh, when we did get our seat mounted, one question for some people out there would be: when we got our seat mounted, we have another at least four and a half to five inches before our we'd ever get our head anywhere close to the top of this the bottom <laughs> of this bar. So maybe there's recommendations. We we raised it up a little bit just so we could see out of the car a little bit better, but. I know, I know everybody has opinions and different opinions on how things should be. I don't know if you can see the door bars over there. I'll move them. Yeah, move them. No, we'll get you over here. Where's the light? <laughs> the light's like tucked up under the dash. I stuck it there. It's going to be hard to pull out. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully... Right here you can see the door bars actually yeah. pretty well it's... on the side. But it's pretty, it's really well made. I, I don't see any problems there's even another bar going forward under where your leg would be yep so you're protected coming from the side if you yeah. take an impact and then all of this is completely encased even up here in steel yeah uh, and it's it's not like it's really it's not like tin you know it's it's fairly thick steel all the way around it i know those bars there we go get some more light on it those bars there are a lot uh a lot closer together than they were in like my arrow hobby stock uh boy i'd and they're rounded out here quite yeah. a way, so you got some room beside you. Yeah. Yeah, she's... You're very protected on the driver's side. And like Jason was saying behind you, you've got multiple, multiple cross bracings in all the corners, all four corners. There's another one up there. And even on that side. Yep. So... I'm going to say good job, Harris. That's... <laughs> Yeah, I, pretty I, substantial. Yeah, right off the bat, when when I seen the pictures, it was it was like wrecked, and it was a matter of bad angles. Things got hit by. Yeah. And I, I it didn't. I don't think it mattered what car he was in. In in one of these, I think the result was probably going to be the exact same. Yeah. Of what happened. Like you said, it's the important thing. The young man walked away. He's going to race again. So there's the amount of room between professor and. Up here? Yeah. I don't know how many inches do you think I got? That's oh, to the God. padding. There's padding Seven in there. Seven or eight. A lot. <laughs> There's quite a bit. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of side room. Honestly, there's more room beside me here than there is in the late model. Way more than I had in my car last year. And there's, there's more steel wrapping around this cockpit than there is in our late model that we have. No question. Do you feel safe? Yeah, I feel pretty safe. There you go. <laughs> That's the key question. And it's Javon. So There's a guy that knows a thing or two about safety and rolling cars over. Yeah, something. <laughs>
All right, Professor, I, we were a little serious this week. That was not our, it's not how we usually function is what I'm yeah. saying, but did we miss anything? I, I think we pretty well got it covered up pretty well. I mean, it was... We hope that does kind of help everybody out there. And, you know, if you're worried about safety and stuff, uh, you know. It definitely made you think of it, you know. It, it did, it did. It got everybody thinking and it got everybody talking and that's not a bad thing. So how did the, how did the Niner here, how did the meat plow, the, the beef wagon, how the, how the motor dyno out? Was she pretty good? Yeah, he was actually really happy with it. Man, man it was probably the best one he's had yet, that's for sure. But, really? Uh, he was he was down to a lot of leftover spare parts. And this year, Manny got a few more sponsors on this thing. <laughs> it, every one of them involves beef oh. almost. Yeah, <laughs> hence the beef wagon. And uh, it just, it, we were joking, it kind of looks like, you know, you're reading the classified section. When you look at Manny's car, he's got sponsors everywhere, but. But uh, so did the the headers versus last year's manifolds? Well, uh, from what from what we ended up finding, the the headers actually they seem to help out quite a bit. It seemed to actually make a little bit better horsepower with the new headers that IMCA has them using, and yeah. it cut the torque down just a little oh. bit, but nothing like what the manifolds used to be doing. And it made them it made, actually made it quieter. Weirdly enough, really it seemed like it was very quiet. So it was the first time we dined with the headers, and we're going to do it some more. Uh, maybe change the lengths a little bit, but we basically took the whole kit Schoenfeld sent us, just tacked it all together, put it up on there, and that's how he ran it. It, it worked really well. See, we're still here for you hobby stock guys. Jevin, what's what's the rule with the manifolds now? Uh, they can still run manifolds. Oh yeah, you can still run or them. Or you can run the headers. Yeah, you can run the headers. And there's, I, there's one style of header approved. Yes, one style. Well, the crate has its own style header, then part number, then the... Uh, the open motor has another opening part number. Okay, so it's two different sets of headers versus open yep. crate. Yeah. But it's you can run one headers. One of them are designed for like a Vortex style head. Yeah, they have they're, both, they're both from uh, Schoenfeld, Schoenfeld yeah. headers. Yeah. So. yeah, I get those from uh, Schoenfeld over there, Denny Schoenfeld, he, he hooked this up. No, he just, he just- Oh, you got an inside track here is what you're saying. He just <laughs> called him direct. I just called up Dennis, Dennis Schoenfeld up and Told him what I needed and he hooked me up. I got three sets for me, SpongeBob, and Manny. And Sweet. Harwick. And Harwick, oh, yeah. Too. We oh, that's right. We got another another guy in the hobby stock division this year. Harwinkle. And uh, we'll be following Har Harwinkle, as Cal says in the background. <laughs> what the hell happened to these? What happened to the. Somebody been messing that? with that thing or what? Anyway, we'll see you next week on uh, Old Guys That Drive Stock cars and racing radio another family tie here yeah i'll use all the racing radio Getting our earbuds yes. earbuds through them like nascar guys yeah you can't hear anything in it the helps car. when your sister works there <laughs> yeah there's something missing yep just over here in dubuque got a service call the walmart and roll in and this guy is out here walking his pig yeah, look at that. Well, I don't think I've ridden in the back of a pickup truck since I was a Boy Scout. I think I got Milo to keep me company, huh, bud? Oh. He's got another one. Where'd that one come from?